say the very least, your conduct has been most unsatisfactory. I am therefore dispensing with your services. And the sooner you leave these premises, the better. What about my wages? Wages? After the damage you and that tramp did to my dining room, you're lucky I didn't call the police. Leave my house at once! Go on, read out what it says about my Aunt Sally. I've already read it four times. Read it out again. Might come out differently this time. Go on. Mr. Shepherd, the well-known local personality, is still offering a small reward for the safe return of his valuable Aunt Sally, which was recently stolen from the village fate. Is that all? Yeah. Well, don't it say nothing there about old Wurzel? No, what would it say? Well, as it might be, uh, Miss Aunt Sally, who, who lives in the big house, yesterday invited Mr. Wurzel Gummidge round for his tea. Mr. Wurzel Gummidge is a well-known scarecrow hereabouts. After the way you two behaved, I wouldn't think she'd be allowed to live in the big house any longer. Yeah. Well, of course she does. Owns it, so she does. Fit for a duchess, that big house is. And that's why my Aunt Sally's a duchess. Ah, oh, talk of the devil. Aunt Sally, what have you been and gone and done to yourself? I was tossed by a ball, if you must know. Tossed by a ball? Oh, my, oh, my. Uh, if that ball had been, been a rook or a wood pigeon, I'd have had its feathers off. Now, come here in and, and sit you down. Come and sit down over here, next to old Wurzel. <laughs> <laughs> what are you two gopping at? Go and get none for acorns for Aunt Sally. I don't want acorns. Cup of water, then? Oh, and that jug here? Yes, come here. <laughs> come here, uh, wait. I don't want anything. I'm so miserable. What's the matter, Aunt Sally? She's got the sack. I have not got the sack. To get the sack, you have to be employed. I've never been employed in my life. If it's any of your business, I've left my own behind. But that big house? Didn't suit me. There were too many windows. The sun got in and faded my paint. There ain't any windows in here, though, is there, eh? <laughs> you don't suppose I am going to live in a dirty barn, do you? I don't see why not. Sweep it out. Give it a good sweep out and then we could get married. And these two here could be bridesmaids. Thought to be absurd. Besides, I have to go to Egypt on the next boat. And there any bulls in Egypt? Millions. Then I shall go to Japan, or possibly Romania, as long as I leave this dreadful village. Well, what's up with it? It's not fashionable. There's absolutely nothing for a person of May breeding to do. It's dead round here. No pictures, no football, no nothing. There's plenty to do. Such as what? Digging up worms. Plenty of worms to dig up here, about. And dancing. They're always holding dances at the village hall. There's one on tonight. Yeah. Why is he making that noise? Because he's stupid. It so happens that I am very partial to dancing, little boy. I have danced before the crown heads of Europe. I don't think it's that kind of dance, Aunt Sally. Oi, nip up the air, love, and get me my dancing head. Right. The dancing head? How will I know which one it is? Are you stupid or something? It's the one with the dent in it where I fell over at the Scarecrow's Ball. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hurry up. Scarecrow's Ball? <laughs> Every Scarecrow for miles around went to that ball. Yeah, the Crow Man played his fiddle, and we danced and we danced and we danced and we danced till the stuffing on our legs came out. Is this it? Yeah, that's it. Bring it down here. Ah. There we are. It. Pesky spiders. Go and spin your webs in your own tragedy heads. Ah, that's better. Hold on to it for a minute. Let's see if it fits. I don't think it's polite for people to change their heads in company. Well, don't look then. Now, here goes. One, two, three. There we are. Come on, John, give him the other one. That's it. Oh, that's 
that's it. <laughs> that's what I call the dancing head. Dancing head and half, this is. <laughs> right, let's see where it still works, see? Tonight, if we ask him. No chance. Oh, I always support local charity, but where would I stay if I missed the last bus? Uh, you could stop here in the barn with me. Out of the question. Why for out of the question? There's plenty of room, isn't there? I don't think you understand, Wurzel, but the thing is, you're not married yet. I'm married. What's that got to do with it? Someone doesn't know the facts of life. I have a solution. I'll stay in the barn and you can sleep in the pig's trough. In the pig's trough? Why not? You should feel quite at home. If I do go to this charity ball, I should need some fine clothes. Can't go in these dirty rags. You can go in a potato sack for all I care. And you shall need fine clothes too. Fine clothes for old Wurzel? Ah, you're having me on. Where would I get fine clothes off of from? It so happens I knew the very place. <laughs> You do. So glad to see you, Mr. Peters. <laughs> it's in a very worthy cause, you know. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Braithwaite. Now, I don't want to see you hey, play. Hello, oh, no. Mr. Shepherd. How very generous of you to support our little charity for once. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Somebody give me a free ticket. Really, of all the nerve. To think I gave that girl her marching orders only this afternoon. Tickets, Tickets. Tickets. Radio, put your bag down over there where no one will pinch it and we'll get to dancing. No, that's not what we do at all. First of all, we sit down. Why for sit down? You can't dance, sit and dance. Dance to reason. We sit down so that you can get me some refreshments. Refreshments? Well, what do we want for refreshments then? A plate of buns? Yes, but not a dinner plate for only half. Some very grand people here today. We have to watch our manners. All right. Plate of buns coming up. Sherry, please. Oh, and a large whiskey, please. Is this where the bun is? Hey, oh, here you are. Excuse me, shift yourself, missus. Let the dog see the rabbit. Well, they deserve one another, I suppose. No one with an ounce of reading would look at that girl. I don't care what Mrs. Bloomsbury Barton says, I feel sorry for her. What, Mrs. Bloomsbury Barton? No, the girl. Such a funny thing. Well, why don't you ask her to dance with you? Who, oh, me? Go on, I dare you. It's not a question of daring. I haven't danced for donkey's years. Well, I don't look like she has either. Well, that makes two of us. All right, Mrs. Braithwaite, I will. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we shall have an excuse me quick step from Sid Ogin and his serenaders. Thank you, Sid. May I have the pleasure? What? Uh, oh, uh, this dance. Oh, what a gentleman you are, certainly. I do happen to be free at the moment. Shall we? Thank you. 
I'm sorry. May I have the pleasure of this dance? You can't dance with two plates at once and you have your stupid scarecrow. No. Put him down. But let these gallants eat him up, not likely. Uh, go on, put your arms round me. That's it. Right, here we go. One, four, seven. Oh. One, three, two. One, seven. Two, one, eight, nine. You're one. not doing it properly. Well, of course I'm doing it properly. It's not a proper tune. They're playing the wrong kind of music. It's not what my dancing heads used to. You can't dance at all. your sulk yet, because I have. No, I have not. I intend to sulk all night long. I've never been so humiliated. Well, that's because we wasn't dancing proper. All them newfangled tunes, my dancing head just don't recognize them. You made me a laughing stock. No more than I made it myself. Anyway, we shouldn't have been doing that dance. We should have been doing the scarecrow up. I'm sure I don't know the scarecrow up. Oh, yes, you do. You was at the scarecrow ball, same as what I was. You danced the scarecrow up till your head fell off. Right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now request time. Has anybody got a request? You say it and we'll play it. You got a request, Bar? Yeah, I've got a request. What is it? Do you know the scarecrow up? The scarecrow up? What's the matter? You deaf or something? The scarecrow up! Can you bust the scarecrow up, boys? Right, Osbar, the scarecrow up it shall be. Anything for a laugh? your Aunt Sally clothes again. Just as you was when I first clapped eyes on you. Make a fine wedding dress, that good Aunt Sally. That's it. You sleep on, my dear. I go and get the crow man. He'll marry as quick as a wink. Come in, Wurzel. Good morning, Wurzel. Morning, Mr. Crowman, sir. Uh-oh. Begging the door chip's pardon, sir, but... Ah, 
How did you know it was me without even looking around? I am the crow man, Wurzel. Oh, yeah, that's her. And if us scarecrows could see out the backs of our heads, what a fright it'd give them dang rooks, eh, sir? It would indeed, Wurzel. It'd give them an even greater fright if you were to turn up on duty in Tanaka Field once in a while. But I was on duty, Mr. Crowman, sir. I've been up since Cock's Crow this morning. And I saw this, this good, great rook, bigger than a sheep nor it was. And I chased it, and I chased it, and blew me down if I didn't finish up here. Oh, you see. So you want to get married, do you? Yes, my soul. How did you know that, your magicianship? I know all about you, Wurzel. I made you, remember? Uh, you did indeed, Your Holiness. Uh, and I thank you for that from the bottom of my stomach. And do you really think Aunt Sally's the right way for you? Oh, she is, Mr. Crowmanzer. You ought to see her and me dance in your eye, Magnus. Give her a stick. It's this way. Life isn't all dancing, Wurzel. Oh, it is for us, sir. Dancing and singing and singing and dancing all our live long days. We never a cross word. With Aunt Sally. Oh, we do knock each other's heads off every once in a while, but we don't mean nothing by it. Oh, we're a pair, sir. Made for each other, as you might say. But you weren't made for each other, Wurzel. I didn't make Aunt Sally. Oh, you taught her the art of walking and talking. That I do know is your eminence. Yes, and I sometimes wish I hadn't. Is your mind made up, Wurzel? Mind? What mind, sir? Your head, your, your... What do you call that head? Ah, my dancing head, Your Majesty. Yeah, your dancing head's determined to get married, is it? It is that, Your Lordship, sir, yes. And what do your other heads have to say about it? They'll do as them told, Your Highness. Yes, I suppose they will. Very well, Wurzel. On your own heads, be it. Morning. Oh, morning, Mr. Shepherd. Enjoyed that first night? And a waste of money for them as was foolish enough to pay for it. You <laughs> still got that old side you wanted taken off your hands? Well, it's still for sale, if that's what you mean. Why, are you thinking of buying? Well, it depends on how much you want for it. And the condition it's in, of course. Well, come and have a look at it. It's in the old barn. Uh, I don't think it is, Mr. Braithwaite. Well, it is unless you two shifted it. I put it there myself. It's all blunt and rusty, Mr. Shepherd. Not worth the money. Well, you keep out of this and mind your own business. Now then, unless two certain people have been playing with what they shouldn't have been playing with, it's all by... God bless my soul. Well, what's that doing here? Sleeping by the look of it. Now, where have I seen that face? Same place you've seen that dress in that pinafore. That's my Aunt Sally, that is. What's it doing here? So that's why you didn't want us to come into the barn. Now, what do you know about this? Nothing, Mr. Braithwaite. Honest, we didn't put her in Now, here. look here. That's a valuable antique, that is. That's not a doll. If anything's happened to that, you'll pour it. I'm telling you that. Let's get out of there. Wasn't there a reward, Mr. Shepherd? Reward? I'm going to tell your father about this. That's the only reward you're going to get. Be careful with her, man. All right. Slide her in. What's he doing with my Aunt Sally, Mr. Crowman, sir? That's it. All right. Can't you stop him, Mr. Crowman, sir? It's too late, Wurzel. Too late. To Mr. Crowman, sir. Where she'll be happy, Wurzel. Back to her attic. Happy? In a freezing cold and dark little attic? Oh, yes. That's where she dreams her dreams. Of America and Egypt and Romania and 
marrying a duke and riding in a gold coach. She wouldn't find those things out in the cruel world, you know. I suppose not, Mr. Cromancer. But she found me, though, didn't she? She found all worse. Of she did indeed. And she'll remember how you danced together and everybody clapped and cheered. And in her mind, she'll turn that drafty old village hall into a, a palace with chandeliers and footmen. And instead of dancing with a scarecrow, she'll be dancing with the Duke of Romania. That's, that's what she called me, her holiness. Her Duke. And her my Duchess. There's a whole magic kingdom in that wooden head of hers, Wurzel. Let Aunt Sally keep her dreams, hey? What about me then, sir? What about old Wurzel? Haven't you got a magic kingdom? Yes. Reckon I have, sir. When I'm standing in the middle of Ten Acre Field, guarding it, I start to thinking. Seasons comes and goes. And them little fledglings grows up into good, great rooks. There ain't nobody knows what's going on in this old head of mine, sir. Nobody but you and me, eh, hey, Wurzel? Now, come along now. It's time you were a scarecrow again. outside your way. Honest. We try to stop him. Ah, oh, that'll no matter. It's like what the crow man says. We're better off. Her dreaming her dreams. Me dreaming mine. And scaring rooks, which is what I'm fit for. Poor Wurzel. Go on, shove off to school. 